crystal in water keeps coming away. This remote one so affective computing, you know, to, to do it, to program a computer to do this, we have to figure out how we do it. And most of us do it without realizing how we do it. It's sort of like vision. You know, you open your eyes, it works, looks easy, right? <laughs> Why is this hard? Uh, but for some people, it turns out that it turns out recognizing motion is extremely hard and they need to learn specific rules for it, just like the kind of rules we're having to give computers. Uh, in particular, a lot of people on the autism spectrum, and also a lot of people who don't have an autism label but who have nonverbal learning disability, who just can't read faces uh, or other emotional cues in a social setting. And for them, we need to make explicit what this means. Like when you see an eyebrow go up, when somebody sees you, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean they're afraid? You know, probably not. Probably means they're recognizing you, acknowledging you. Maybe they're open to, you know, you approaching them. And those signals are really important to read correctly. My husband and I were organizing a bike trip, you know, from Cambridge down to Provincetown. And we'd mail the whole lab. And one day this guy who I'd never met shows up in my office and says, hey, I'd like to go on the bike trip with you. You know, my name's Matthew Belmonte. And um, I hear that you're building computers that can recognize emotion. And I'm like, well, you know, we're working on that. And um, he said, have you thought of working on autism? My brother has autism and has difficulty recognizing emotion. And I'm like, what's, what's autism? <laughs> and next thing I know, I'm learning about this, you know, really fascinating condition that affects now about one in a hundred children. And um, not all of them have trouble reading emotion, but many of them do. And also many people without autism have trouble reading emotion. And gradually we've come to see that a lot of what we're building is really on the wish list of a number of people who struggle with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And now our desire is not just to give these skills to machines, but to build technology that helps people who need support with these day-to-day -day reading of emotion experiences. Imagine if you couldn't see if the, you know, the girl that you're trying to get interested in you is annoyed by something you said, and you is kept it, saying that, that half thing. Of the people? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. As we were building our first social emotional prosthesis, so many people came by and said, you know, I know somebody who needs that, or my spouse really needs this, <laughs> or can you build me the mood ring that tells me my wife's mood before I go home? You know. Um, so it turns out none of us are perfect at you know, transmitting or receiving emotional information. We all make mistakes with this. And in fact, I think most of us think we're better at it than we are when we actually test people on, you know, facial expressions that are, you know, true anger, true fear, true delight, or a new one we've thrown in, smiles of frustration. People are 50-50 telling the smiles of frustration from the smiles of delight. They are getting them wrong. different. Lying, it turns out, it, well, it's complicated, but one of the reasons that we want to look at multiple things um, is not just because any one channel might be faulty, but also when people are sincere, you know, when you meet with people like in a real face-to-face -face interview, you're sensing not only like what their accomplishments are and what kind of person they are, but you're sensing kind of how congruent their expressions and gestures and words are. And when everything's congruent, you kind of feel at peace, like, you know, this person feels sincere. When, however, they're like acting really stiff and stressed, but talking like they're really happy, you know, something's, something bugs you, right? Something's incongruent. Or when they don't look happy at all and they're like, we're really happy you're here today, <laughs> you know, you're like, I'm not sure you are. together. And in fact, this is even more exasperating for a person on the autism spectrum um, and for people who have what's called um, sensory integration challenges. Um, for many of these people to simultaneously switch and process channels of auditory and visual information is really hard. They can concentrate on the speech or they can concentrate on the visual, but doing both simultaneously or if they're wearing a scratchy wool sweater at the same time, you know, that's really a challenge. So for some people, their brains don't naturally integrate these channels like most of us do. People have not only not looked for help, but they're often not even aware that they have this problem until somebody says that other people can do this. And then suddenly they, it explains for them why they've had so much trouble in their life. You know, 
it's like when something's ab you know when when you have something extra that other people don't have you might notice that you have it but when you're missing something that others have that they don't talk about you may not be aware that you're missing it until you know you ask questions like why is it that everybody's always getting annoyed at me and walking off why is it that people say i'm so boring <laughs> and i'm and in fact this is a problem cuz a lot of people on the spectrum are actually quite fascinating they're not boring at all uh, but they can't read when you need a break in the conversation. Okay, so you probably get this a lot in these interviews. Somebody like me gets going, 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 talk, 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 talk. <laughs> right, right. Now, if you look away or start to look at your watch or look disinterested, I should read the cue and pause, you know, and let you. Try to engage. Exactly. Um, but if I can't read those cues, then I and you know, then I just kind of assume you haven't interrupted me, so I should keep going. And besides, what I'm talking about is clearly fascinating, right? So you, you must be engaged. Um, so there's often, often what they are talking about is fascinating, but people get overloaded by the barrage of information. They need a pause for the, the brain to process. Crystalline water keeps coming and going. In a stream of wonders, it follows, meanders. All in it splashes into millions of bubbles. Play, hide, and seek in the castles of sand. How's that for a prize?